Every day, the lottery pays out millions of dollars to winners all over the world. In the blink of an eye, you can go from swimming in debt to swimming in a custom-built saltwater infinity pool. The promise of an easy win is the hook, and almost nobody is immune to the prospect. You go to sleep living week to week and wake up being financially free. The literal dream, right? Until you examine the statistics, of course, and you'd have a better chance of being struck by lightning than winning the jackpot. Unless, of course, you find a way to beat the system. What if you could win, not once, but over and over and over again? Meet Victor Jonai, a 40-year-old successful real estate agent and father of four. He ran his own commercial real estate company in the Detroit area of Michigan, negotiating deals for Walmart and fast food chains. Described by co-workers as smart, funny and hardworking, Victor grew up a child of immigrants from the Balkans. His parents spoke very little English, which offered Victor lemons and he turned it into lemonade. At the age of 12, he single-handedly negotiated the sale of the family home. By the time he was 18, he was a full-time real estate agent and soon after negotiating multi-million dollar deals. Despite his success, it was never enough, and Victor had a secret that could ruin even the wealthiest of people. He was deep in the grips of a crippling gambling addiction. It started out as most gambling addictions do, just a hobby. He would spend hours playing Club Kino, a game where 20 numbers from 1 to 80 are selected in drawings that occur every few minutes. Very soon he became convinced he'd figured out the system. He became obsessed. He thought the numbers weren't just random and was determined to prove himself right. He built an app to predict the drawings and he was right. Victor walked away with $52,000 in winnings. That's where most people quit while they're ahead. But for Victor, that only made the addiction worse. He needed new, higher stakes, which made him switch to the Michigan Lottery Daily 4 which pays up to $5,000 a day, and the Daily 3, which pays up to $500. In both, a series of ping pong balls are drawn from a plastic tank at random. Not something that sounds predictable, right? I mean, it's random. But that wouldn't stop Victor from trying. A Daily 4 ticket costs $1 to play, but you can spend up to $24 on what they call a wheel play, which turns any combination of four numbers into a winner. So if you bet the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, any combination of these will win. 4, 3, 2, 1, 1, 3, 4, 2, you get the idea. This increases your likelihood of winning from 1 in 10,000 to 1 in 416. Yet again, Victor found a way to increase his chances of winnings, but it was still a gamble on random odds. Odds he could hedge in his favor mathematically, but they allowed you to do this. That's what it was specifically for. Not being content with this and thinking he could figure everything out still, he started to beautiful mind the numbers, obsessing how he could game the system further, resulting in elaborate spreadsheets that kept track of every number sequence that won, and trying to predict what numbers would come up next. He even connected the dates of his lucky numbers in an X shape on his calendar to help him figure out when his next numbers would be played. This, of course, didn't work. Despite being an intelligent man who'd beaten all the systems, Victor struggled to recognize that there are no patterns to random lottery drawings. Every night is independent of the next. If the numbers 0059 win on one night, they have exactly the same chance of winning as any other set of numbers the very next night. Despite this, Victor still believed in his system. Whether by sunk cost fallacy, fear of missing out, or something else entirely, he stuck to the plan. And eventually it worked, or at least he thought it did. See, according to his completely unscientific system, his lucky numbers 7800 would do, because they hadn't come up in a while. So he did the only logical thing. He bought between 300 and 1000 tickets every single day, from June 15th until June 17th, and he lost every single day. But on June 18th, he bought 500 tickets and he won big time 2.5 million dollars an absolute dream come true for everybody except for victor who looked stoic almost bored as he collected the money just another day being a lottery gambling genius right one big win for victor 
was nothing. He was too deep to quit, and so he continued to play, continued to chase the dragon. Americans spend $70 billion annually playing the lottery, which is more than they spend on any other form of entertainment combined. Most of the people playing never win anything more than a couple dollars. Victor, though, well, he just couldn't stop winning. A few months later in November, he won another $4 million. And then four months later in February, he won $9.5 million more, bringing the total of his winnings to over $28 million, making him one of the biggest lottery winners in Michigan's history. At this stage, he was so obsessed with the lottery, his real estate business was starting to suffer. So instead of walking away with all these winnings, he hired a friend to help him play the lottery. Gregory Vito would help with the lottery numbers and Victor would continue to run his real estate company, which he established under a new name, Imperium, which is Latin for absolute power. With so much money coming in, Victor was starting to live the good life, upgrading his experiences. He traded in his 2015 Lincoln Navigator for a $100,000 black label, took his wife to the Jennifer Lopez concert in Las Vegas, and even splashed some extra cash so she could have a meet and greet with the star backstage. Next up on the glamorous come up, he bought a house on a 3.6 acre plot and made plans to tear down the existing property, building a gothic style mansion that would be worth over $2.25 million once completed. Things seem to be going amazingly for Victor, but seems is the key word here. Just like $28 million seems like a lot of money. That is if you have $28 million. On paper, Victor had that cash as winnings. In reality, he owed considerably more money due to how he got those winnings. At the start of this video, I mentioned that Victor had a crippling gambling addiction. He wasn't playing the lottery and getting lucky. He was gambling massive sums of capital every day until he won. He was forcing a win and what he received was always less than it cost. To fund this habit, Victor had been scamming dozens of investors. He lured them into attractive real estate deals that were always too good to be true. He sold several investors purchasing rights to the same property and told buyers to wire large sums of money to a fake title company that he set up in his partner's name. Most of the money went right into buying more lottery tickets. He was operating a classic Ponzi scheme, robbing Peter to pay Paul. While ever new money kept coming in, he could pay off old investors, including profits, which convinced people that things were legit. They were not legit. There was no profit coming from anywhere, not from the real estate, not even from the gambling addiction. As with all Ponzi schemes, this was doomed to fail. Victor's system required him to keep winning for everything to keep going. But by St. Patrick's Day of 2018, the last of his luck, if that's what we're calling it, had run out. His last big win was $2 million on the jackpot nowhere near enough to cover his massive deficit. After that, what could he do? He just kept trying, believing in the system that had never worked in the first place. Thoroughly convinced by the bias of a few wins and the sunk cost, constantly chasing a win. He played the numbers his system said would come up soon and bought thousands of tickets a day to cover as many of them as he could. At one stage, he was allegedly spending as much money each week on the Michigan lottery as the state spends per year to treat gambling addiction, $1 million. He owed huge debts to the party stores he bought the lottery tickets from, but nothing compared to the people he convinced to invest in his Ponzi scheme. As his debts mounted, he routed bank statements away from his home address to keep his wife from finding out what was really going on. She thought they were rich, life was amazing, and her husband an incredibly successful businessman. His real business, however, was just a web of lies and obfuscation. In order to keep everything secret, Victor set up a complex system of limited liability companies, either registered to himself or his business partner, Gregory Vito, allegedly without Gregory's consent. According to a civil complaint filed against Victor by the SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission, from 2016 to 2019, Victor stole $26.4 million dollars from 24 investors through 66 different real estate deals. One of these investors, Jerry Masakowski, owned a staffing company 
a new Victor well through other real estate deals. Thinking him legit due to this connection, Victor managed to convince him to go in on the purchase of a medical plaza building in the nearby town of East Point, along with another investor named Chris Krzysztofski. According to the agreement, the three men would own equal shares in the plaza building. As you can guess, that wasn't true. Instead of putting the money in an LLC that Jerry created, Victor made excuses about why the money needed to go to a company called Richfield Funding that was secretly owned by Gregory, his business partner from the lottery. The money was wired on July 18th, 2018 for the deal, and yet, according to court documents, Richfield Funding already owned the property dating back to November 2017. Victor then quietly borrowed $1.5 million against the Medical Plaza building, of course without telling his partners. He missed several repayments and then fed the men stories about his other investments that just needed a little bit of short-term financing. According to the eventual lawsuit, sometimes Victor would pay them back, but he would allow large debts to accumulate over time. Then, as the depths of his debt and degenerate addiction grew, it gets even shadier. In May of 2019, Victor went to Las Vegas for a shopping centre conference and ran into Chris, one of the original investors. Victor nervously asked him not to discuss their business with another investor who was also attending the event. Suspicious, of course, Chris set up a secret meeting with said investor and discovered, to his surprise, that Victor had sold the exact same medical plaza to the other investor. On July 9th, 2019, Chris confronted Victor about missing repayments. Victor replied by text, I'm in the process of fixing my behavior. I beg of you to not disclose any of this to anyone, please. My little girls need me, and this was a wake-up call on how much I need them. As long as I made money for everyone, I didn't think it would affect anyone. I was so damn wrong. I will have your money by Monday or Tuesday. I just want to go back to the old Victor. I miss him so damn much. By then, Gregory, his business partner, had told a reporter Victor was losing his mind. He said Victor talked about numbers for 20 hours a day and obsessed over patterns in license plates and telephone numbers. By August, Victor owed investors approximately $19 million, which wouldn't have been a huge deal had he kept the $28 million he won. He didn't. The winnings had all been used to fund his unbeatable system. It was all spent on losing lottery tickets. He had nothing left. By this stage, the stress of everything was getting to Victor. To anyone who hadn't seen him for a few months, they would have thought him unwell. He rapidly lost 30 pounds from his 6 foot 5 frame, obsessing over his imminent capture. He seemed convinced the US Department of Justice was coming after him. On August 18th, he texted Jerry. Just met with attorney. Unless there is a miracle in the next 24 to 48 hours, this whole thing gonna blow up. Please get prepared because the feds probably will come after our stuff. I'm truly sorry. I know sorry doesn't do anything, but it's all I can say at this point. Just told my kids 30 minutes ago. Nothing like watching your kids lose it. Jerry, if there is anything you can think of, please, please let me know. I don't want the whole ship to sink. Shortly after, Victor packed a duffel bag and left home. He turned himself in at the FBI field office, where he told agents his life was in danger. He demanded to be arrested. However, there was no reason for him to be arrested. There was no case. They turned him away. According to a later police report, at 6am on August 20th, 2019, officers responded to a complaint of a man possibly on some type of drugs at a hotel in Ann Arbor. Officers discovered Victor on the third floor wearing only boxers and mumbling in broken sentences. Upon inspection of his room, they found lottery tickets, beer cans, wine bottles, pills, $2,000 in cash, and handwritten notes addressed to his family members. Officers took him to the University of Michigan Medical Center, where he was treated before being released. After leaving the hospital, Victor went into hiding for six months. Nobody could find him. His real estate agency, the Imperium Group, had closed their office since the workers were no longer being paid. Construction stopped on his $2.25 million mansion as he owed the contractors $200,000. Victor wasn't wrong about the Justice Department. He was just a little bit early. On January 28th, 2021, Victor was charged with one count of federal wire fraud. He hired a lawyer to represent him by the name of Steve Fishman, who has worked with many high-profile criminals. The DOJ built the case against Victor, which was relatively easy considering the number of people he'd pulled into a very blatant Ponzi scheme. 
In March of 2021, Victor pleaded guilty in court and agreed to pay back his victims to the tune of $25 million, as well as forfeiting another $19 million. However, his lawyer told the court that Mr. Jonai is broke and his family is in distress because of it. Victor was later sentenced to 53 months in prison. From the outside, Victor had it all. But enough was never going to be enough. The addiction made him incapable of quitting. That very first victory was all it took to convince him his system was a winner. He just had to stick to it and everything would work out. He found himself in the same hole that many gamblers find themselves, digging deeper and deeper to try and climb out, only stopping when there's nothing left to do but lay down and finally give in. That's how Victor Jonai won the lottery over and over while simultaneously ruining his life, turning the stereotypical dream into a living nightmare.